Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, as we trace this alley up and down, our talk must only be of Benedict. Let it be thy part to praise him, even more did man merit. My talk to thee must be of how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. <laughs> now begin. For look with Beatrice, like a lapwing, runs close by the ground to hear our conference. The pleasantest angling is to see the fish. Cut with her gold and oars the silver stream and greedily devour the treacherous fate. So angle we for Beatrice, who even now is couched in the woodbine coverture. For you not my part of the dialogue. Then we go near her, that her ear lose nothing of the false sweet bait that we lay for it. <gasps> no, truly, Ursula, she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and wild as the haggards of the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince, and my new traded <laughs> lord. Oh, and did they bid you tell her of it, madam? They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but... I persuaded them, if they love Benedict, to wish him wrestle with affection and to never let Beatrice know of it. Why did you so? <sighs> Doth not the gentleman deserve as full, as fortunate a bed as ever Beatrice shall couch upon? Oh, God of love! I know he doth deserve as much as may be yielded to a man, but nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Beatrice. She cannot love. She is so self-endeared. Sure, I think so. And therefore certainly it were not good she knew her love. At least she makes sport at it. Why? You speak truth. I never yet saw a man. How wise, how noble, young, how rarely featured. But she would spell him backwards, so turned she every man the wrong side out. Sure. Such carping is not commendable. No, not to be so odd from all fashions as Beatrice is. But who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would mock me into <gasps> air. Oh, she would laugh <gasps> me out of myself, press me to death <gasps> with whip. Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in sighs, waste inwardly. You tell her of it, hear what you will say. No, uh, rather, I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passions. And truly, I'll devise some honest slanders to stain my cousin with. One doth not know how much an ill word man poison liking. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have. As to refuse so rare a gentleman as Senor Benedict. Oh, dear. <gasps> he is the only man of Italy who has accepted my dear Claudio. I pray you, be not angry with me, madam. Speaking my fancy, Senor Benedict. For shape, shape, for bearing, bearing, argument and valour goes foremost in report to Italy. Indeed, he has an excellent good name. His excellence did earn it, ere he had it. When are you married, madam? Why, every day, tomorrow. Come, go in, I'll show thee some attires, which is best to furnish me tomorrow. She's limes, I warrant you. We have caught her, madam. If it proves so, then loving goes by hats. Some cupids kill with arrows, others with traps. <laughs> Fire is in mine ears. Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? Contempt. Farewell, and maiden pride adieu. No glory lies in the back of such. And Benedict, love on. My kindness shall requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. If thou dost love, I will incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. For others say thou dost deserve, and I believe it better than reportingly 